This is Johnny Gould's Jewish State. France promises liberty, equality and fraternity to all of its citizens. But after the Republic's highest court delivers the most grievous and dangerous miscarriage of justice, does this pledge extend to Jewish people? Because in France, smoking cannabis doesn't only soothe your mood, it also frees you of any personal responsibility if you kill a Jew. In 2017, retired doctor and school teacher Sara Halimi came home to find her neighbor Kobeli Traore inside her Paris apartment. He'd subjected her to years of abuse, but now he was intent on violence. Traore savagely beat 65-year-old Dr. Halimi, shouting Allahu Akbar, and then hurled her from a window to her death, shouting, I killed the Shaitan, demon in Arabic. This is Johnny Gould's Jewish State. Jewish people and their friends from all backgrounds united in protest in LA, in Miami, New York, Marseille, Tel Aviv, Paris, and here in London, where a crowd restricted by COVID regulations congregated outside the door of the French embassy in Knightsbridge. Organized here by the mighty Campaign Against Anti-Semitism, the speakers included their CEO, Gideon Falter, Maureen Lippmann, and Sophie Wiesenfeld from the Hexagon Society. Muslims Against Anti-Semitism was represented by Liz Arifia, whose moving speech of solidarity proclaimed, Jews are not alone. You're not alone, and at Mass we'll always stand with you and speak out as allies, standing up whenever anti-Semitism prevents, presents itself and wherever it comes from. Thank you. Thank you for joining us during the holy month of Ramadan, in particular during a long day of fasting, Liz. And I went to the rally with my French wife, Karine. Aujourd'hui, je suis en colère suite au non-lieu prononcé par la cour de cassation. Kobili Traoré, tant sous l'emprise de stupéfiants, est pénalement irresponsable et ne peut être jugé du meurtre de Sarah Alimi. En France, on ne juge pas les fous. C'est la loi. Mais dans le cas de Sarah Alimi, Pourquoi la Cour de cassation n'a-t-elle pas tenu compte des circonstances et créé jurisprudence comme elle l'a déjà fait, au lieu d'appliquer strictement la loi Kobili Traoré est un délinquant, connu des services de police. Il a fait de la prison. Il a harcelé Sarah Alimi et sa fille. Il est traité de sale juive les semaines qui précédaient son meurtre. La nuit du meurtre, Il s'est rendu chez des voisins qui avaient un appartement mitoyen, celui de Sarah Alimi, pour pouvoir s'introduire chez elle par la fenêtre. Tout cela me fait plus penser à de la préméditation qu'à une simple bouffée délirante. Kobili Traoré savait exactement ce qu'il faisait. C'est pourquoi je trouve la décision de la cour qui le déclarait responsable choquante. D'autant plus que le caractère antisémite a été reconnu. De plus, pourquoi les policiers prévenus par des voisins la nuit du drame sont restés en dehors de l'appartement de Sarah Halimi dans lequel se trouvait le meurtrier et ne sont pas intervenus Je suis très en colère parce que ça fait beaucoup d'actes antisémites en France qui sont banalisés. Je pense à l'affaire Ilan Halimi. Je pense à Mohamed Merah qui a tué des enfants dans une école juive à Toulouse. Je pense à lhyper je pense à Mireille Knoll. Ça fait beaucoup Et j'en passe et j'en oublie, mais, mais que fait la France pour combattre l'antisémitisme Je suis très en colère, car cela se reproduira encore. Je suis Sarah Alimi. And in English I am very angry today. The Cour de Cassation rules there is no case to answer because Kobili Traoré was under the influence of drugs and therefore not criminally responsible to be tried for the murder of Sarah Alimi. In France, we don't judge fools. It is the law. But in the case of Sarah Alimi, 
Why did the court, the cassation, ignore the circumstances? And why didn't they make jurisprudence as it has already done uh, instead of strictly applying the law? Kobili Traoré is a known delinquent to the police. He served in prison. He harassed Sarah Alimi and her daughter and treated them as a filthy Jews in the week preceding the murder. The night of the murder, he went to neighbors who had a flat adjoining Sarah Alimi's to enter her home through the window. It all sounds more like premeditation than just a delusional puff. Kobili Traoré knew exactly what he was doing. This is why I find the decision of the Cour de Cassation, which declares it irresponsible, shocking. Especially since his anti-Semitic character has been recognized. Also, why did the police officers, who had been told by neighbors on the night of the crime, stayed outside Sarah Alimi's flat where the murderer was staying and did not intervene? I am very angry because there are a lot of anti-Semitic acts in France that are trivialized. I'm thinking of the Ilan Halimi case, uh, Mohamed Merah who killed children in a Jewish school in Toulouse, not to mention the hypercacher, uh, Mireille Knoll. It is a lot. But what is France doing to fight anti-Semitism? I am very angry because it will happen again. Je suis Sarah Halimi. For months. French authorities refused to even admit the anti-Semitic nature of the crime. Dr. Alimi's murderer, a violent drug dealer, claimed that he'd felt possessed because he was high on cannabis and shouldn't be held responsible. And France's highest court agreed and ruled in his favour, meaning that in France it's possible to be sentenced to a year in prison for throwing a dog from a window, but hurl a Jew to their death while high on drugs... You walk free. According to one psychiatric report, he had been, quote, troubled by Jewish artifacts in Sarah's apartment and the mezuzah on her door, which amplified the frantic outburst of hate. He will not on appeal be prosecuted. This appalling betrayal of liberty and fraternity, not to mention humanity, by the Cassation Court is the next chapter in the historic anti-Semitism of the French nation. The world has seen it in the persecution of Captain Dreyfus, in the Vichy government, in the avoidance of responsibility for rounding up citizens, Jewish citizens during the Second World War, and countless modern examples of the disregard for anti-Semitic crimes, including the obscene attack on school children in Toulouse and the innocent deaths in the kosher supermarket, the stabbing of a Holocaust victim, survivor, I'm sorry, and the growing number of hate crimes against Jewish citizens and the desecration of cemeteries with Nazi symbols. The fact is that the French government is more fearful of retribution, jihadist retribution, than they are of justice for their Jewish community. They're paralyzed by fear of race hate. The French authority did not even, it took them two days before the death of the other woman who was thrown out of the window, the Holocaust survivor, It took them two days before it was reported to the press. And outside the Jewish press, the appeal decision has barely, barely been reported. It doesn't suit the left agenda that anti-Semitic attacks are anything other than the result of the actions of Israel. It is little wonder that French Jews are fleeing the country of their birth and heading for the diaspora in record numbers. Where... I'm wondering where is the world's outrage at these growing Gallic hate crimes? The courts and now the Cassation Court appeal have dismissed the idea of prosecuting Traore on the grounds that he was, by the use of cannabis, and I quote, taken from a polymorphous persecutory delirium with a mystical theme, during which the simple Hang on to that word. The simple anti-Semitic prejudice has turned into absolute conviction. The simple anti-Semitic... 
the simple anti-Semitism. Simple as in ordinary, normal anti-Semitism. This man, this killer, he didn't have a brain tumor or psychosis informing his behavior. This hate-fueled jihadist was a simple anti-Semite with a drug dealing problem. Now to me, this makes intoxication by the use of drugs or alcohol exonerate any criminal for an accusation of violence. It says clearly that drunk drivers who kill children on the roads, who are now in prison, should walk free today. That drug users who kill to feed their addiction should all walk free. And furthermore, it says that if you want to kill a Jew with impunity, then make sure you smoke a joint or have a bottle of scotch before you do it. It says that a killer takes no responsibility for their actions because they are deluded by their drug of choice. It says in its choice of words the simple anti-Semitism and its insistence that Traore's drug fuel delusions made his crime random, not personal. It says what David Badil has been telling us chillingly this year that Jews don't count. And that's the end of the pursuit of justice in France for Dr. Sarah Alimi. No appeal process is left. Knowing his republic's judiciary lost the plot, French President Emmanuel Macron has called for a change in the law. Sophie Wiesenfeld, who operates the Hexagon Society, an Anglo-French think tank of grand ideas and cultural events, brought a personal message from the world-renowned French philosopher Bernard-Henri Lévy. I will conclude with that words from my dear friend, the philosopher Bernard-Henri Lévy, who allowed me to read you this text from him. When a statue is flawed or unsuitable, or when it no longer leads to wise decision, it is the mark of a democracy's greatness to take on the task of reworking it. And even if the new legislation will not make it possible to render retrospective justice to the victim of the latest hate crime, I suggest calling it Sarah Halimi's law. Thank you very much for your attention. But that doesn't mean justice, justice, we can't pursue elsewhere. Lawyers for Dr. Alimi's sister say they'll bring a lawsuit under Israeli law to convict her anti-Semitic murderer. Esther Lekova is an Israeli citizen and her lawyers intend to make use of an Israeli law allowing them to take action over the murder even though it was committed outside of Israel. Her lawyers said they can't accept a denial of justice which tramples on reason and justice, reaching far beyond the Jewish community of France. In addition to the lawsuit being filed in Israel, Dr. Alimi's family is also considering an appeal to the European Court of Human Rights, ironically based in France, in Strasbourg, in the shadow of the European Parliament, but with no powers to overturn the French court's ruling. The crowd was made up of some well-known Jewish figures, including Mizrahi stars Lynn Julius and Chen Mazik. You learn from the best. Well, no, we'll, find, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, Chen Mazik, it's always great to catch up with you, and uh, thank you again. We're all here together. Um, and despite the social distancing, this was a good turnout today. Yeah, absolutely. I see, to see so many um, Jewish and ally um, uh, people gathering together and standing up for justice, this... This case, I think, is so, um, it touches everyone because you're seeing an, uh, a lady that is a, a teacher, a doctor, a Jewish lady that has, um, has done nothing wrong and uh, was murdered once by uh, a murder, an anti-Semitic murder, and then the second time by, um, by the French authorities uh, for, uh, for letting him go without um, um, letting, letting him get away with murder. Um, so I think that's why so many people really uh, felt compelled to come here because it's Sarah Halimi this time, but it's more than just her. It's, it's, a, it's an icon for, for all of us to know that you know, this might happen to us as well. How vulnerable are the Jews of France and indeed of Europe? Um, for me personally, living in London, I know that uh, British Jews are definitely vulnerable and they can 
tell you, I mean, you know uh, better than most how how challenging uh, being Jewish is. But ask any French Jews, better yet, ask French students, French Jewish students that will tell you that uh, nine out of ten of the nine out of ten French students last year, French Jewish students uh, experienced anti-Semitism. Nine out of ten. So only one out of ten people did not experience anti-Semitism. The this sort of uh, of uh, hatred and and um, uh, really, I mean, vile uh, uh, attacks on, on this community um, is, a, is a symptom of a greater disease in, in, in France, but in Europe as well. Jews are um, at a greater understanding of what anti-Semitism is. I have to admit, and I had this conversation with Tuvia Tenenbaum, when he started talking to me a couple of years ago, we've become friends since, that I tolerated it because it was the environment in which I grew up in. Now, when I experience it, I know I'm getting it. Mm. It's not a joke. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the the thing is that I find that only the Jewish community, being part of uh, of other groups and and knowing and and interacting with a lot of um, groups in the, in my progressive circles, I see that other groups also experience uh, race harassment, bigotry, um, hatred, violence, like we do. But it seems like only with Jews, uh, it's just you know it it's been um, um, uh, put under the rug. People just want to ignore it. Uh, they don't want to to take actions. They will let a murderer that murdered a woman throwing her out of her home's um, um, window, saying that it's not anti-Semitism, saying that it's it's just um, it was under the influence. Diminished responsibilities, we call it in UK mm. law. Yeah, exactly, and it's uh, and it's pathetic, but it's a. Uh, but it's more than just pathetic, it's, it's dangerous. And I think people coming out today and, and people speaking up about it uh, is, is crucial. It's not just important, it's crucial for, for our people's survivor because, again, it happened to Sarah Halimi. I, I would hate to see it happening again, so we need to, to stop it. Kol HaKavod, Chen Mazik, thank you very much for joining us again here. Thanks for having me, and th- good, so good to see you, Johnny. Always good to see you. Always. Raphael Landau is a YouTube journalist, Sons of Kananaki. I think it's not black or white. Um, seven psychiatrists decided, said that Kobili Traoré was victim of buffet délirant, as we say in French. So, like, you know, diminished responsibility. Exactly. Now, two of these psychiatrists were, are Jews, right? Some is involved in the Jewish community. So, saying that these psychiatrists are, are anti Semites is, you know, not really sensible to say now I'm a bit also the other thing is what is the message that you, that you convey to the Jewish community if you say that the Jewish the French law isn't enough or isn't isn't capable of, of, of addressing this, this case well, what is the message the wrong decision. yeah but why not I mean are we sure that it's a wrong decision? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm Jewish, I'm defending the Jew, and I'm, I, I'm not afraid of naming the issue. But there were seven psychiatrists. I don't know. What, the message that I want to convey is I don't know. I would like to have, a, I think, a debate between lawyers or between yeah. a lawyer and a psychiatrist, a debate would, would help understanding, understand the situation. But, like, right now deciding to opt for the Israeli solution, I don't know. But Raphael, you said right at the end, your last words were, the antennae have gone up the last 20 years. Yeah. My antennae are at 10 for this. It's pretty damn clear. I, I wasn't there. Um, the evidence is pretty clear that if you smoke weed, you can throw an old lady off a balcony and claim diminished responsibility. In no way is someone shouting Allahu Akbar on balance of evidence innocent of that. This, we cannot make excuses for this. My antenna's up and yours is too. Yes, emotionally, even rationally, when I think about the case and the decision, I'm shocked. I'm appalled by, I'm appalled by, by this decision. But, uh, you know, I tend to say in, on, on my videos on YouTube, I tend to say that I only speak about subjects that I know or that I studied. Legally speaking, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the law is wrong. Maybe it needs to be changed. There needs to be a discussion between, like, experts. That, that's what I think needs to happen. That's the next step of action. For me, that would be the best thing to do. For years, France has gradually betrayed its Jews by allowing anti-Semitism to run rampant, putting French Jews in fear. 
The final word in this episode belongs to event organiser and CEO of the campaign against anti-Semitism, Gideon Falter. Could there be anything more urgent and more serious facing European jury than this huge miscarriage of justice which we are protesting against today? As far as I can see, anti-Semitism in France is absolutely out of control. It's uh, you know the rise of 121 percent since 2017 in anti-Semitic incidents just shows that the, the, the brakes are off in France, and the only thing that is going to make a difference if it is if anti-Semites are held to account if the French justice system works, and instead. We now have the court decision from France's highest court essentially signalling to anti-Semites that the most basic of excuses, I was on cannabis, seems to work. And they're talking now about a new law uh, that would uh, mean that in future cases there is justice for people like Sarah Halimi. But the fact is it shouldn't be necessary. This isn't the first time in France that someone committed a crime whilst on drugs. And it sends an absolutely terrible signal. So what we're out in front of the embassy saying today is there has to be an absolutely urgent response from the French government. We've seen decades of synagogues burned, Jewish people stabbed, tortured, killed. And if France wants to maintain its reputation as a country of liberty and equality, then it needs to act. It can't anymore allow its Jewish population to be persecuted like this. And we all feel like we knew Sarah Halimi in some way. She was a 65-year-old lady. She was quiet. She was dignified. She was a doctor. She was communal in that way that uh, all her menschkeit obviously lent her to. I don't even know her, but that's kind of the, the vibe I get from looking at her, her kindly picture. And to endure what she endured, a torture, the fright, the shock, that she probably knew she was in an area which was dangerous. It's extremely frightening for them. All of the indications are, and the the polling seems to support this, that French Jews are increasingly despairing for their future. And if this is what the European Union, what Europe, what France looks like in the 21st century, then that is an absolute betrayal of the the promise that was made after the Shoah in which so many... French uh, Jews were too often the victims of complicity of the French authorities rounded up by their own countrymen. And it's an absolutely appalling thing that in the 21st century, this is the this is the fate of French Jews now, that they are afraid of their future once again. Gideon, we're of the same generation. We were born 25 odd years after the Holocaust. And, uh, you know, uh, putting that into context now to see that the kind of halo of never again seems to be falling. Of course, we've just fought an election in which, uh, you know, the uh, chief dog whistler in in British politics of anti-Semitism was defeated. You know, I I think that anti-Semitism is a hatred that doesn't respect borders. It doesn't respect Brexit. It doesn't respect the European Union. It doesn't respect any kind of uh, national law. Anti-Semitism flows across borders and we have seen the lights go out for Jews in one European country after another to the point now where many French Jews consider that they don't have a future in their own country. We've seen the lights flicker in the United Kingdom and then stay on. Uh, We saw that uh, there was a really sort of crushing rebuke to the anti-Semitism that took took to the fore in the Labour Party and it's vital that we continue to fight. This country is one of the best in the world in which to live as a Jew, but we have to fight every day in order to keep it that way. And unfortunately, the situation of French Jews is a cautionary tale for British Jews. We must never allow the rampant anti-Semitism that is taking hold in France to affect us in this country. We have to keep fighting, and what happened in the Labour Party is yet another example of why that's so important. Gideon, this was an excellent rally. Um, I'd like uh, to take this opportunity to thank you and also ask people listening to think about making a donation to the campaign against anti-Semitism. Where can they do that? That's very kind of you. They should just go to antisemitism.org slash donate. Donate today. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you, Gideon. (laughs) Thank you. Never miss another Johnny Gould's Jewish State. And be first to hear the next show by subscribing now. Follow.
follow Johnny Gould on Twitter and Johnny Gould Show on Facebook. And if you liked what you heard today, leave a rating or review. That really helps bring more listeners to the show. 